Ladies and gentlemen, let's read game into the com video. We have some news once again from Camp NVIDIA. Now, I'm sure we all know by now that NVIDIA are indeed working on their upcoming Pascal architecture. Not too surprising that leaks are starting to appear. Now, the biggest highlight is it's going to feature 17 billion. I'm just going to repeat that again because I'm pretty sure some of you might have thought I said million. 17 billion, with a B, transistors and up to 32 gigabytes of high bandwidth memory too. Now, the full cult... Uh, CUDA architecture will arrive in at least 2016, assuming once again there's no setbacks. Now, there was a report published, and currently, to give you a point of comparison, the GM200 core, which is the same core found in the Titan X, has 8 billion transistors. The R9 Fury uh, X, meanwhile, features about 8.9 billion. Uh, it starts to get a little tricky to count at this particular point, so it's not 100% accurate, but pretty close to it. So basically, we're dealing with double the transistor count in the Pascal architecture. That's just crazy. It's insanity. It's madness. It is... It's Sparta. It's just ridiculous. It's compute-focused from what we understand, and theoretically... We should be seeing a very similar architecture in Quadro, Tesla, and of course the GeForce lineup. And it is based, as we've already mentioned, on TSMC's 16NM node. This is going to be not just power, not just performance, but also power efficiency. Now, we already know that the car, sorry, the GPU is being taped out. And from what NVIDIA are telling us, because let's face it, there's not exactly a massive amount of information at the moment. NVIDIA are starting to already plan their future with high bandwidth memory too. This means they're going to get considerably more denser chips and the card should have 16 gigabytes or even up to 32 gigabytes of high bandwidth memory which is going to be on a 4096 bit memory interface. It will dominate 4K. I just want to point this out. This is not a card which is targeting like 1080p the equivalent of the 980 or the 980 type whatever the hell it's going to be called i'm just going to call it the pascal 80 because who knows what they're eventually going to call this thing i, I refuse to call it the 1000 series so i'm just going to call it the pascal 80 yes i've now patented that by the way um it's not going to be targeting like 1080p it's not going to be 1440p this sucker is electrical and it will be generating many gigawatts of energies it's, it's just ridiculous. I mean, it's just, it's just ridiculous. 8, gigab 8, 8 gigabits of DRAM die and 2 gigabits per second per pin. This means that each stack of HBM2 is 256 gigabytes a second. There's four stacks of this stuff. I mean, seriously. Four stacks, one terabyte a second of bandwidth for the GP100. I want to put this into perspective. Everyone was going nuts, crazy, loco, including myself, might I add, for the Fiji. Now, the Fiji has 512 gigabytes a second. Remember, it's using HBM1, and AMD will be using HBM2 for their... Uh, Arctic Islands, but I don't want to de dedicate this for AMD's cards because this is a uh, NVIDIA GPU, you know, discussion. To put it into perspective, the TIE, the 980 TIE, which obviously is not slow, has 334 gigabytes a second of memory bandwidth. Now that, of course, is using GDDR5, blah, blah, blah. Think of this, it's got three times the bandwidth of the 980 Ti. Actually, slightly more than that, but still. That is ludicrous. That's like... Oh my god. Now, Pascal will introduce the NVLink, uh, which is unified virtual memory. But, from what we understand... It's probably not going to benefit the CPU side of things uh, in, uh, I was going to say in uh, Intel, but I was actually going to say IBM. But from what we understand, 
The CEO of NVIDIA, Jen Husson, um, hopefully I'm pronouncing the chap's right name right, uh, has mentioned, however, it will benefit um, multi-card SLI users. Now, exactly how is not exactly known at the moment, unfortunately, but it's meant specifically for users of multi-cards, and you will actually be able to use up to eight GPUs in the PCs for gaming, if your wallet can soldier that. It will basically allow the memory to be much better utilized between the GPUs. How this is going to work, I have no idea at all. Um, because frankly, there's just no information on it. But, oh, my freaking goodness. I mean, it's just ridiculous. I'm sorry. It's just ridiculous. This card is not designed for 1440p. This card is designed for 4K or even 8K. Um, you know, 4K is a thing at the moment. But let's just be totally honest. 1440p at the moment, most GPUs are fairly reasonable. And like the 290x kind of level. Or even the 290 to be fair. You know, the 780, the 780 Ti, the 980. They can... For the most part, there are some games which are going to, of course, challenge 1440p, but they're fine. 4K, you're going to have problems with certain games, like the Crisis 3, even with a 980 tie or something along those lines, even a Fury. You can do it, but you're not going to be at, you know, 60 FPS plus, which is really what you're looking for. I don't think anyone's going to be upgrading to, like, 4K monitors and thinking, gee whiz, I'm so happy I'm playing at 30 FPS. No. You know, you're going to be 4K, so really that's why there are so many folks who own a 4K display that then are caught in the bit of a rat race where they have to buy, like, really high-end uh, GPUs and unfortunately they have to SLI them, and that's the only problem with 4K because the actual displays are getting a bit cheaper, but the GPU performance to power them is still quite difficult, and that's one of the reasons that a lot of folks are going for, like, just for example, 1440p G-Sync or FreeSync monitors, and then maybe doing some downsampling. That's one way to go. That that that's a good option. Uh, you know, get like a 27-inch or something along those lines, uh, 1440p display, and that's certainly a good uh, you know a good idea. Obviously, it does depend on pixel density of the display. You know, the bigger, higher resolutions are definitely a good thing. For example, on a 40-inch screen. 1080p, maybe not so much if you're really close up, you're going to start noticing, but, you know, I suppose 24 to 28 inches, 1440p is not too bad. Once again, it does depend on how close you are to the display. However, the next generation of GPUs, the ones that which we're discussing here, they're going to be really cool. Um, and, you know, it's going to be using, of course, it's going to be using 3D memory. It's going to have, supposedly, Pascal's going to have four times the compute 16 uh, FP16 performance over the previous generation, obviously, Maxwell. And it's going to be just ridiculous, to be totally honest. One last little thought on this whole situation before I go. I think PC gaming is going to be really cool. I actually have had discussions with people, which aren't really pertinent necessarily to NVIDIA only, but just in general, that, you know what? It's going to be really interesting in the next couple of years because if you look at DirectX 12 and, you know, any of the new APIs actually, which of course are Mantle and Vulkan, it's going to be a game changer. And this is why I was also talking just a couple of days ago, a day or so ago, of Intel's new CPUs. And the reason that... While I'm kind of interested in, you know, the 6700K, just for example, I'm not, like, amazed, I'm not infused, because I'm not enthralled, because it's still four cores, four, uh, eight threads, blah, 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 and I get the feeling that in a couple of years' time, the PC gaming landscape will really be different, really different, because we could theoretically be having multiple core CPUs, you know, GPUs which are just ridiculous amount of performance, like 16 gigabytes of memory, 
built into the GPU itself, or at the very least, 8 gigabytes being like, you know, the minimum kind of thing, with several hundred gigabytes per second of memory bandwidth and displays becoming high resolution. And while we can attest to all this, just imagine what the generation of games are going to be in a couple of years' time. Makes you think, doesn't it? But just, holy crap. Just, just holy crap. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.